Hey, what's up you guys? This video is long overdue. I cannot tell you how many times I've had guys message me on Instagram and on Facebook asking me about my setup when I'm shore fishing for muskies. I have responded multiple times and answered their questions, but I always tell them, hey, stay tuned, I'm gonna do a video on this. And I've probably said that for about two years now, maybe longer, I don't know. I apologize, sorry for the long wait, but it's finally here. I'm super excited to show you guys what my setup is for chasing muskies from shore. Pretty easy, pretty simple, anyone can do it, but there's just a few items, a few things you need to make sure that you have in order to do it right, to do it safely, both for you and the fish, and hopefully to have some success and to catch some muskies. So let's just jump right into this. Before I get into all the specifics, I just want to real quick give a shout out to Alternative Fishing Lures. This is their backpack. They have a few different models, a few different versions. This is the one that I have. I love this thing. It's actually bigger than it looks. I don't know how well you can see that in the video from this camera angle, uh, but this looks like a traditional uh, double strap backpack you put on your back. It is big. It is much bigger than your average backpack. I love this thing. That's why I use this one for shore fishing muskies, because as you know, generally speaking, you're using bigger baits which requires bigger tackle boxes, okay? Not always, I'll show you that a little bit here in a moment, uh, but generally speaking, I can put a, quite a few big tackle boxes in here to bring my musky lures, and I've still got room to spare. So it's a very comfortable, very durable backpack, and what's unique about alternative fishing lures is all of their products are made from recycled plastic. So go check them out. Don't want to talk about them too much. I love their stuff. I use their lures. Obviously, I use their backpack. I have not been disappointed with anything I've received from alternative fishing lures. Last real quick highlight on this backpack is most backpacks that you find nowadays will have a belly strap to help distribute the weight, which I love and I prefer when you're shore fishing all day and you're covering a bunch of ground. That really helps with minimizing fatigue and and minimizing pain and stress and discomfort on your shoulders and your upper back so i love the belly strap however alternative fishing lures with this model the strap actually comes across high on the chest and i wasn't sure what i thought about that when i first saw it i was like is that going to make a difference how much of a difference is that going to make but you guys the first couple times i used it i was blown away i was very impressed that higher strap across the chest allows you to kind of tighten and concentrate the weight of this backpack in your chest and your upper upper abdomen. So there's not as much pressure and stress on your lower back or even if you're a little bit older like myself and your abs aren't what they once were, it takes away the pressure from your midsection, your lower midsection. So all of it is up here. If you're kind of walking and leaning forward and using your chest and your shoulders, it really does make a difference. I honestly have gotten to the point now where I prefer the high strap over the belly strap. They both work. They're both game changers. I don't like backpacks that don't have either. So it's gotta have one or the other for me, but I'm telling you right now, the higher chest strap is a game changer for me and something you should check out go look at alternative fishing lures. I'll have a link in the description down below for the website. But anyways, enough talk about the backpack. Let's get into my setup for shore fishing muskies, okay? First thing you're gonna need is a backpack. And you guys, when it comes to lures, I'm gonna open this up. When it comes to lures, you guys, less is more. I've actually got more than I usually bring with me. I just wanted to show you how much I could fit in this backpack. But I've got some smaller gliders and swim baits in this box. I've got my bigger traditional size gliders in this box. I got my Conklin lures. I'll, I'll, I'll let you take a sneak peek in there. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is my glider box, all my favorite gliders, but my bigger, more traditional musky size gliders are in there. Glide baits are phenomenal lures, especially if you're shore fishing on rivers, just an FYI. But I've also got my smaller bucktails and bigger beefed up bass jigs because if you guys have watched any of my videos, especially going small in the fall, you know that hair jigs and bass jigs will absolutely catch you a ton of muskies and big muskies later in the season. And then I've also got my, you know, what I would call small musky tackle box. This has got smaller suics, it's got smaller gliders and jerk baits, it's got slammers. I don't know what else is in here. It's got slammers, it's got cranes, it's got it all, okay? So, first bit of advice I'm gonna give you, minimize your tackle. What I usually do is I grab two, three boxes at the most and I combine. 
So I'll take stuff out, put stuff in. I'll bring a couple bucktails, a couple gliders, a couple jerk baits. You can get away with shore fishing for muskies, you guys, on about half of what I'm showing you, okay? Seriously, you can get away with about two boxes. That's all you really need. You could even do it with one if you really want to get light. But one to two boxes, change it up, different sizes, different actions, different presentations. Just make sure you have a, a small variety of each type of bait, top water, you name it. One thing I don't have here in front of you, I usually bring about two or three rubber baits with me, some smaller Medusa, some Bulldogs, you name it. It all works. Uh, Hellbender lures, you guys, I'm telling you, mix it up, minimize, less is more, save your back, save your legs. If you're gonna be covering a lot of ground like I do from shore, don't get crazy. Don't bring six, seven, eight, nine tackle boxes. Don't bring your pounders. You're gonna regret it, okay? So narrow it down. Get baits you have confidence in. Don't be afraid to use some smaller lures. Take some of your traditional stuff, but you'll be fine with one to two boxes. What else I have in this backpack here in the front, and, and just so you know, there's two side compartments I didn't even use right now. You can fit a ton in this backpack, and I already said it. You're gonna want some good musky pliers. I usually have a backup here with me as well. Hook sharpener, because on the rivers especially, if you're banging off of rocks and timber and whatnot, you never know when you're gonna need to sharpen some hooks. Don't lose fish over dull hooks, you'll regret it. I've got some release gloves in here, Musky Maniacs release gloves, these things are sweet. And I also believe I have my hook cutters right there. Make sure you've got hook cutters, make sure you have big pliers, hook sharpeners, and hook pliers to cut hooks if, if those hooks are very deep on an aggressive fish, okay? So that's all I'm bringing for the most part in regards to my lures and my terminal tackle. That's all you need. And like, and like I said, you guys, you can get away with half of these lures, if not even less, okay? Less is more, keep it simple, Take confidence bait, focus more on size, bait fish pertaining to the waters you're fishing, the depth of the water you're gonna be fishing. If you're on a lake, if you're on a river, if you're on sand, rocks, weeds, think about all this ahead of time before you get there. Only take what you need. If you're gonna be out there all day, if you're gonna be walking a lot, if you're gonna be going through the woods, up and down hills, on slippery boulders, if you're gonna be getting in the water, which I often do, Think about all this head time, ahead of time and only take what you need. Which brings me to my next item, which I don't know how well you can see this here, but I got my waders, okay? Now, I don't always use waders. You don't always need waders. Depending on the time of year, it's actually nicer if you can get away with not wearing waders. Right now, we're getting into early summer. It's getting really hot out. You know, if you're gonna wear some shorts and some, some Crocs or something, that's what I would suggest. Stay cool, stay light, save yourself all that work, and you don't wanna overheat anyways. But during the spring, the late fall, when it gets really cold, I'm constantly wearing waders to stay warm, to stay safe. Also, later in the year, when I get into early winter and it's starting to get, you know, 30 degrees outside on average, I wear insulated waders. You'd be surprised as to how quickly that cold, even through your regular waders, can get to you and it can end your day early if you're not too careful. So, have some waders just in case if you're getting in the water colder times of year, if you're fishing in warmer water, if you're fishing in the summer, don't worry about it. You know, stay light, stay cool. Sometimes getting in the water feels great, okay? Next thing on the list, obviously, is rods. I almost never take more than two rods. This is about what I usually have with me when I'm musky fishing from shore. I've got a traditional eight foot musky rod with a Komodo reel on it with 80 pound braid, 100 pound leader, you name it. This is a traditional musky setup. It is a shorter rod, which I will get into in a second, but I wanna go over my next setup real quick before I do that. My secondary rod that I always have with me, and honestly, you guys, I use this one more than my traditional musky rod, is another eight foot rod, but this is a bass rod. This is a Saros Okuma eight foot rod that's an extra heavy rated up to about four ounce lures. This has got 30 pound braid on it with a 30 pound titanium leader on it, okay? So, as I mentioned, you guys, usually this is my go-to shore fishing musky rod, especially when I'm on the rivers. I cannot tell you how many muskies I've caught on my beefed up bass setup, okay? With that said, why am I using eight foot rods and not any longer? You can totally get away with an eight and a half foot rod. Nothing wrong with that, you can do it you'll have success. When you're on shore, it's nice to have a longer rod for figure eights. You're in shallow water. You wanna keep that bait away from shore. You don't want it to blow out of the water. You don't want it to hit rock or bottom. It could totally mess up your figure eight. I get it, I agree. A longer rod will make a difference sometimes on your figure eights. However, outside of that, if you are covering ground, if you're going through the woods, if you're going through thick brush, 
If you're in the water going up and down on boulders, you name it. You guys, this is what I do. This is what I've done for over a decade. And I'm telling you right now, you will lose your mind and probably eventually break a rod if you keep taking eight and a half or nine plus foot rods. I just don't do it. I kind of learned it the hard way. Rods getting stuck in trees, rods jamming into boulders, slipping and falling, you name it. And although a longer rod will help sometimes with a figure eight, if you're in really shallow water, what you're gonna find is that rod tip can be too long and sometimes you're banging into boulders in the water, you're banging into bottom. Not only can that mess up your rod tip, but it can, in fact, obviously mess up your figure eight just as much as you would think, well, a shorter rod might mess up my eight. It might make it harder. I get what you're thinking, but I'm telling you, if you've done this enough, there are times when you're thinking, I wish I had a shorter rod to do what I need to do in this shallow water from shore on this peninsula or this rock I'm standing on, okay? So for me, it's just been trial and error. It's just been an experience thing. In the beginning, years ago, I was taking my eight and a half footer, nine foot rod more often. And I quickly got to the point where I was regretting it. And I was thinking, man, I wish I would have brought my shorter rods because this would be easier to do. Not only is it less work and it's easier for me to navigate through the woods, up and down hills, through the brush to get to my spots. But when I'm actually fishing this nine foot rod or bigger, it's too long. It's bulky. It's hard to cast. A lot of times from shore, you're standing in and around or under trees. You're, you're by fences, you're by walls. I mean, I'm telling you guys, you do this enough. If there's any shore guys watching, they're probably laughing and they're probably nodding yes because they know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm not saying you should use only eight foot rods. I said when I started, use an eight and a half footer, that's fine. I probably wouldn't go longer than eight and a half foot. I also wouldn't go shorter than seven and a half foot. I have just realized over time, this is what works for me. It's ideal. Eight foot rods are the juice. I've caught countless muskies from shore with these two setups, okay? So that's all I'm trying to say. So we've got a backpack with minimal tackle. We've got pliers, we've got hook cutters, we've got hook sharpeners, we've got waders, just in case it's a colder time of year, if you need them. We've got two rod setups. I would not recommend taking more than that. You can, you don't need it. You can get away with one rod. I know a lot of guys that short fish for muskies and they only take one rod and they do just fine. However, sometimes you get into situations where you take one rod and it's a traditional musky setup, it's a little bit more beefed up, and you're throwing traditional tackle, and it's just not happening at all, or you're just getting followed, but you can't get any eats, and you realize, I need to go lighter. I need slightly lighter line. I need to finesse these fish a little bit more. I need to use smaller baits. Good luck trying to do that with a traditional musky rod. You get a beefed up bass setup, sometimes even an open face reel. I've done that. I've got videos to prove it. But when the fish get real picky, and you need to go ultra light and finesse them, if you don't have a backup secondary rod, you're gonna regret it. Depending on how far you have to go to get to these fish, you're really gonna re regret it, and you're gonna be thinking, there's no way I'm going all the way back to my truck to get that other rod, okay? So my advice, two rods is perfect, it's ideal, it's easy to carry, but you can get away with doing just one. Again, I wanna stress, less is more though. Overall, you guys, shore fishing, you gotta conserve energy. Don't overdo it, don't take too much gear. One or two boxes, make sure you have the essentials, the pliers, the hook cutters, etc. One or two rods, you'll be fine. The last thing you're gonna need, obviously, if you want to land muskies successfully from shore, and this can be a lot of fun, it's very entertaining, let me tell you, I have probably netted more than half of my muskies lifetime easily, solo. Solo netting muskies can be stressful, but it's also an adrenaline rush, it's a lot of fun. Over the years, I've come to find that the size of the net really does make a difference. I've got three nets here. I never take three nets with me, okay? So that's not why I've got them all here. I just wanted to show you and give you comparisons in sizes and types of nets to get you thinking. Now, traditionally, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well, I'm musky fishing, I'm taking a musky net, I'm taking the big dog, the one you see in your buddy's boat when you guys go. And I love these nets. They're big, they're wide, they're deep. You know, you can net that world record in this thing if you think you can catch it if it's out there still swimming in your waters. But you guys are gonna learn the hard way if you do a lot of shore fishing and if you take this net all the time, again, depending on the circumstances, the, depending on the body of water you're on, depending on the shoreline, what it's made up of. I'm not saying you should never use one of these huge nets, but most of the time what you're gonna find is traveling, trying to get it there, you're gonna run into tree branches, you're gonna be hitting the ground, you're gonna be dragging this thing, it's gonna be catching everything in your path and dragging it to your spot. It's a lot of work carrying this giant net. 
Number two, you will start to have issues netting fish from shore, especially if you're doing it solo. If there is any debris, if there's any brush, if there's down timber, trees, branches, if there's boulders, if there's sharp concrete walls, you will find you're gonna hit that stuff with the rim, which is gonna mess up your ability to net a fish. And a lot of times your net will catch on whatever's just below the surface on the shoreline on the ground. A lot of times it's, it's boulders and sharp ones or it's down timber branches and trees. And you go to net that fish and all of a sudden you get stuck and you're stuck good and you cannot extend and you can't take advantage of the size of this net or the length of the pole on it, okay? So again, I'm not saying you can't use these. If you're fishing deeper water from shore, if you're on a pier or something like that, there are situations where you absolutely want a bigger net. It's gonna be easier for you to net a muskie, especially a bigger fish. These nets will increase your chances a lot of the time but pay attention to where you're going, what that shoreline looks like, what it takes to get there, and how deep or shallow you're gonna be fishing. Because you will learn the hard way, just like I did, when you get hooked on something on the bottom or on the shoreline, and you can't extend, and you can't net, and you lose a fish over it, you're gonna lose your mind. And on top of that, sometimes you actually rip your good net, and then you're really upset. You're thinking, I lost a fish, I ripped my net, this is ridiculous, okay? so. That's all I'm gonna say about the big nets. Not against it, I wouldn't recommend it. The next net I have here for years was my go-to net. This is what I would call, you know, a medium to small musky net. It is a musky net. This thing is super old. I can't tell you how many muskies I net on this thing solo. This net actually net my PB, my 52 and a quarter inch Southern Wisconsin giant. Uh, it's hard to believe that fish fit in here, but it did and it fit just fine. But this is, like I said, a medium to a small musky net. It's old school. I've had it for a long time. It was a gift from a friend. This thing has gotten beaten up like you could not believe, but it's, it's durable. It's, it's held up all these years. I do like this net. It does the job. It's just right. It's just deep enough. It's not too big and bulky. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, though. The pole itself is heavy, okay? The net itself has a little bit more weight to it. So my only gripe with this net shore fishing is if I'm walking long distance, if I'm going in and out of the water, if I'm climbing boulders and things of that nature, this net is a good size, but it's just a little bit heavy, okay? So you need to think about these things. Now maybe you're 20 years old, you got all the energy in the world and you work out and you're in, in top condition. Awesome, I envy you. Uh, but most fishermen are not always top athletes and a lot of us are middle aged to older, okay? So you young guys, if, if the weight of the net, if the size of the net does not intimidate you, and if it works for you, get after it, have fun. I hope you catch a bunch of muskies. But most guys, I know they're thinking, I gotta conserve energy, less is more. I gotta make this as easy on myself as, as possible. Catching muskies is hard enough in itself. So let's try to make everything else easier and let's increase our chances of catching fish in the process. So the third net I have here, the last one I'm gonna show you guys, if I can even get it out of here, has become you know, I guess you could say my go-to for shore fish and muskies. This is a lighter net, but as you can see, it's got a deep bag, which you want for that fish to, to recover and hang in the water as long as you need to, to get hooks out, what have you. It's got a long pole. This has got, I think this is the 48 inch pole, but this is very light. This is a very light net. It's got a deep bag, which I love. And as you can see, it widens at the end of the net itself, okay? So if I were you, and you're gonna be shore fishing muskies, I would suggest looking for a net like this. A long pole, so you can get that extension, you can get that reach if you need it. A deep bag, so you are able to remove hooks without hurting the fish, and you can also allow that fish to sit and hang for a while in two to three feet of water, no problem, to recover before the release or before any pictures. And it has this wider rim, it, it, it widens, it's almost like a triangle. And that wider rim, you guys, it really makes a difference. Now you don't need one this exact shape, but man, this net has been great for me, you guys. So that's about it, you guys. I guess the two things I would emphasize that you probably heard me say a lot is less is more and go light. Backpack, one or two tackle boxes, minimize your lures, take only what you need, long pliers, hook cutters, hook sharpener, some release tools, some gloves. One or two rods is more than enough. A light net with a deep bag and you're all set. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments, if you think I missed anything, but this is it you guys. When I go shore fishing for muskies, this is usually what I take. 
If you want to know more about lure selection and the type of baits I generally prefer, the stuff I've had a lot of success with that I've caught fish on, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on Facebook, leave in the comments. I'd be more than happy to talk about those details with you. But I just wanted to put out a video that was long overdue showing you guys my basic musky setup from shore. I hope it helps. Stay tuned for more, you guys. And like always, just keep casting.